Hi, so things have not gone exactly according to the plan. Well, I think we found some root mealybugs. That's not mold. Yeah, one of them is moving on the bottom. You can see there. Some of them are moving there on the bottom. So those are definitely root mealybugs. When they say things have not gone according to the plan, they really mean it was a whole train wreck. The train just went into a shit canal. Yes, I did find root mealybugs on my Hoyas. I was just really, really wondering when are they going to make a comeback? I was really thinking it's been such a long time I've missed them. <sighs> But anyways, we are going to be talking about root mealybugs, maybe just a bit about pests in general. Don't expect this to be super useful, I'm going to tell you right away, but you know, it will be fun. I always promise you fun, so let's just... It was supposed to be elegant. Let's begin. So this past week, has not been exactly excellent. I did get my new glasses, so that has been good. I did get my new glasses, but the week has not been amazing. I did try to record several videos that will be of interest for you to watch, but slight changes in the plan, slight changes in the plan, you know, root millibugs came to say hello, etc. And we gotta change some stuff in that plan. I did want to record a video, and I think I will move forward with that decision to do my Hoya wall. And we're coming along, okay. It's not just a Hoya wall anymore, by the way. And I think I will explain that in that video, or maybe I won't. I don't know what's gonna happen, to be quite honest with you from now on. And it was supposed to be a little fun, quick project that we're gonna do on the channel. But then I unpotted my Hoya Burmanica and I found some root mealybugs. And I was really composed. I was like, okay, not an issue. We found root mealybugs on one Hoya. And they're all in their cash pots, right? They all have their own. How bad can it be? Surely no other Hoya is infected, right? Some of the roots are in bad condition, mind you. For example, that one, you can see that moving. I was wrong. I was wrong. This one, this is aesthetic restart, so we don't have to talk about that. These, however, all have root millibugs or head, and I did chop these. Burmanica, I didn't chop. If you follow me on Instagram, which honestly you shouldn't, but also do because I think it means something in this world have follow I don't know I don't really know but if you follow me on Instagram you have seen that I have used sous vide and I still get comments on that root millibug video people I have gotten sous vide a year ago I've never used it but I used it several days ago so stop commenting that I need a sous vide I got it it's fine I treated my Hoya Burmanica with a warm water bath and I will tell you exactly how I did what I did etc and so far she's looking okay it's been three days since then she is looking well, she is looking alive. That's important. I treated one more Hoya, and that is Hoya Mirabilis, and she is also looking okay. And I'm going to tell you why I think this is important. First, let me grab those two. She did get a new pot. She is looking okay. No yellowing leaves so far, and no wiltiness in any part of the plant, which is important. So she is looking good. I didn't want to restart it because it's such a big plant or medium-sized plant. You know, it's not the biggest. I've seen bigger. What are we talking about? We'll see how she goes. So I'm not telling you go ahead and do this treatment. So what I did, I took the plant obviously out from the pot. I cleaned off 
as much, or if not all, I think I could manage to clean off all of the soil from the roots, all of the potting mix from the roots. I give it a quick shower so it's not dry because, you know, it took some time for the sous vide to heat up. So I made sure before I put it in the water, I also hydrated the plant one more time. And I put it in the sous vide for 10 minutes at 48 degrees Celsius. Now, a lot of the advice says 49. I did 48, fingers crossed, that was enough. I don't really know, but I did 48. The reason for that, the water, you know, you can put your hand in it. It's not super hot. You know, you wouldn't want to keep your hand in it for so long, but you know, it was fine to put your hand in it. And I made sure not to put the entire plant. I really tried to minimally put the leaves in. The reason for that is I talked with May April of Sweden. <laughs> of Frost Vida blog. She has a blog on Hoyas. She's a very good grower, very knowledgeable grower. She told me that it is best if you keep the leaves above ground to minimize the damage. The method that I used is something that she tried and she has had some success with it. And she told me how to reduce the stress on the plant. So I didn't, you know, this didn't come from my head. Obviously nothing comes from this head. I put it in the sous vide for 10 minutes, 48 degrees. She did 49, I decided to do 48. Hopefully one degree doesn't make that much of a difference. And after that, I put it from the sous vide in water that is sort of room temperature. So in another bucket to cool it off immediately. It stayed there for about 10 minutes as well. And then I took it from that water, and this is what May April recommends, cool it off right away from her experience, minimizes the damage, the stress on the plant. Then the next step that I did is not something that they recommended, but it's something that I read on a lot of cacti or succulent forums, is I put it in systemic insecticide and what I used is confiter, confiter? It's imidacloprid or imidacloprid, however you pronounce that. And that is essentially used very effectively for root mealybugs. Now they do a drench with this. All of my plants are inside. The treatment was inside in the summer kitchen, but it was inside. So it was as safe as using systemics can be. But the reason for that is root mealybugs are difficult to get rid of. And I will talk about these methods, why I chose to cut these, not that, etc. So root mealybugs are not so easy to get rid of. And the sous vide alone, I don't think is going to do the trick. You can kill off most of the adults and you're probably gonna destroy all of the eggs. But the issue with that is you can't really submerge the entire plant. What can happen, and it did happen to Betsy when she was doing the mite treatment, and this is why I didn't use it for mite treatment, the sous vide, is some plants will react very harshly, or not harshly, very dramatically, and the leaves will show damage, they will start to fall off. It doesn't happen with all of them. Let me back up here a bit. I'm sorry, this is a digression here. But when we started to use the treatment, the sous vide, for mites, I remember people were complaining. I think Betsy made a video about sous vide treatment for mites, and I think she treated 30 or 40 plants and they were all fine. And then people watched that video and they started to treat their plants and some people have had issues right away. Leaf drop, plants started to yellow, etc. The issue is not every Hoya is the same. For example, May April told me Hoya Kanyakumariana, she did the treatment only for the roots, the sous vide treatment, she didn't take it well. So not every Hoya will be the same. So, you know, when other people tried it, I think that's what they saw on some of their Hoyas, it doesn't work. I also think that the overall health of the plant is important. The temperatures are very important and what to do afterwards, I believe is very important. And I don't know what to tell you. This is why I'm saying, you know, I'm trying this, we'll see how this works on this plant, if it works, if it doesn't. I'm not recommending anything to anyone anymore. I'm just sharing what I did and whatever you do is on you. There's so many variables and I will just, from a digression, go to another digression. I did the paraffin oil treatment, which is a treatment that you use for mites on plants. And I did it pretty regularly last year. And I think you're not supposed to do it when it's over 30 degrees of Celsius or under like 15, something like that. Don't 
temperature range is important, but it's not supposed to be too hot or it's not supposed to be too cold as well. Just a quick disclaimer, I had to insert here the mineral oil product that I use and that is made for plants has paraffin oil as the active ingredient and all that it says is that you are not supposed to do the treatment when the temperatures exceed 30 degrees Celsius, which is 86 degrees Fahrenheit, but all it says when it comes to low temperatures is that when it is too cold, some temporary and passing phytotoxicity can occur and that this can occur when the treatment is applied too often. So take that how you will. And I treated my plants Hoya Cari, Hoya Paradisa, Hoya Denisi Frida, Ivra Sherry. I treated them several times last year and they took the treatment really well, no issues at all. And then at one point last year, I treated them and they started to lose the leaves pretty quickly, pretty immediately because of the treatment. The concentration was the same. It wasn't too hot and I believe it wasn't too cold, but I believe in the end what affected this or what caused the leaf drop is perhaps that the plants were a bit more dry. And I did read somewhere on the internet, I don't know when, that when you're doing the paraffin treatments, the plants are not supposed to be dry. They're supposed to be recently watered, apparently. I don't know what difference this, it makes, but apparently it makes a difference. And I believe that's what may have happened. I think also when if your plant is perhaps very infested with mites, maybe there are more damages, more openings on your plant for the oil to seep in and then it suffocates the plant. I'm not really sure, but they did not have a great time. They did not, especially my hoyakari, still suffering. We have to fix my hoyakari, but that's a topic for a different video. So that is why I'm saying I think the overall health of the plant is important. This one, even though the roots were affected by root mealybugs, she was pretty, she was watered, right? She was in a pretty good shape. So I think maybe that's why she seems to have taken it better. I wouldn't do it on a plant that is dry. I wouldn't do it on a plant that's heavily infested maybe with mites on a plant that is already weakened by something else, I think I would stay away from this treatment. So that's for the digressions. Now, uh, people have used Confidor for root mealybugs, and it seems that it's the only solution, aside from, you know, soaking it, etc., cetera, uh, this drench. And I think in Australia, I read, you can also buy, like, a systematic granules that you can put near the root ball, and those are the confidor systemic granules. The thing with root mealybugs is I have wrongly believed they only stay in the root zone, but apparently they can also climb up. And they're not so easy to spot. They're smaller. They're actually, I think, a different species from the regular mealybug. I have not personally seen them. I have not inspected my plants, nor will I with a microscope, but people who have said that they have seen them up on the stems. They have seen the eggs upper on the stems. So that is not great news. I feel that's pretty bad news, actually, in terms of how news goes. So just soaking the roots in sous vide, I don't think it's going to work, nor is this. So that is why I decided to use systemic insecticide. And we'll see how well that will work. The thing is when the roots are damaged, the plant has a more difficult time absorbing the systemic. I think I will keep an eye on this plant. I will spray it several more times with paraffin oil and soap, castile soap, and see how that goes. I will keep you updated. I'm recording videos every day this week and the next week, so if you, if I tell you this is falling apart, you will actually know pretty soon. And then the other one that I treated is Hoya mirabilis, in this one, I did get some of the leaves in the water, but I don't see any damage. I do see damage on one leaf, but honestly, I don't know if that's from this or something. Oh, that's not damage. That's something. What's that? That's something else. Okay, so none of the leaves look damaged. They all seem firm. This one had a bit more roots. I actually did not see root mealybugs on this, but I was like, hey, when in Rome, right? Another thing that I forgot to mention, this is actually very important. Back to Hoya Burmanica. Um, shut up, just for the love of. Another thing that I did, so after the systemic, but if even if you skip this step, what May and April suggests, let them dry. Take it out from the bucket of water that you used to cool off the Hoya and then let them dry, pot them the next day. She says it seems to reduce the stress. 
I don't know, it seems to have worked. So I didn't pot it the same day, I potted the next day and I didn't water it for a day as well. I also know this orchid people when they repot, some of them, not all of them, some of them when they repot their orchids they don't water for a week because of the damages that occur in the roots, they let those heal, so to prevent any bacterial infections, etc. So I didn't water it for a day, I don't know if that was enough or not, or actually for two days, I didn't water it for a day and then I potted it and I also didn't water it and I actually just last night I gave it some water, but not a lot, not even enough to go through the pot, but just a light, light watering. So we'll see how that works. Now these plants here, I have um, Affinity Hoya Bella or Hoya Affinity Bella PES03 and I have my, um, it will come to me, my Polyneras, I have my Polyneras. You know, I started to repot the plants and I found on all of these, I found root mealybugs to varying extent. My current theory how this happened is because when I take down the hoes from the wall, I take them to the bathtub and after the bathtub, I put them in a giant prop box. I usually I group them in four or five prop boxes so they can drain before putting them back on the wall. And I always group panduratas and these bushy hoes together because it's just, it works best for me that way. And all of them have root mealybugs. I don't think this is a recent thing. I think Burmanica probably contracted the disease last year or so when I repotted it. Um, and here we are, here we are. Nothing new was introduced to the wall when they were on the wall at the same time. And I see hoys that are up or that were more up on the wall, they're fine. And they never shared water. So sharing water, not a good thing, not a good thing. So the reason why I decided to cut these is honestly, Hoya Pandurata that I have, the green one was ugly. So I decided to cut it. It didn't look the best. It didn't look the worst. It fit with its current look on the wall, but you know, it lost a lot of the leaves when I was treating it with oil. So different plants will react differently. Always remember that. I think even if we have a list of all the Hoyas and what treatments have we tried on them and how they managed, it doesn't mean if my Hoya Pandurata or if my Hoya Burmanica did well with the treatment, doesn't mean yours will. Just gonna tell you that. So my green Hoya Polinera looked ugly-ish, lost a couple of branches. It was really like a pot with two long branches that looked nice, but you know, when you take it out from the wall, it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. So I decided to restart it. I've been meaning to for a while. And then with my silver one, I wanted to actually just get bushier pots with my Hoya Pan, uh, Polinera Silver. I wanted to get bushier pots for a while and I was like, you know, I don't want to do it, but I decided to do it this time. This is my silver Polinera and I think I'm going to cut them a bit more. We're going to do that in this video. I think this Bella PES03 or yeah, PES03, I think I'm going to leave it as is. I'll think about that. That one I didn't cook because I honestly don't know. I think I was at that point just wanting to go to bed. So I cut the plants. And my outer variegated Polinera I also cut because I want to make a full pot of that too. So that is what we have here. And I think I will cut it even more. I'm contemplating, contemplating how I will do it. I think from this I will do three cuttings. And then from this one, one, two, three, four, five maybe five from this, and I will put them in the same pot. They're very pretty. This is for my friend Farah, and I'm so sorry this has happened. But they also grow pretty fast. They also grow pretty fast, so I am confident that they will very quickly grow to be very nice again. And bushy. I actually really love this Polinera, the outer variegated one. I didn't think I would, but if you are on the verge of getting one, definitely get it. I think it's um, very, very, very nice looking. Very nice looking Polinera, honestly. Maybe even my favorite. This one, I think I will just do one note cuttings. The reason, I will explain why I'm doing some one note, some not. This one is also nice. Um, I think I like the outer variegated more. Sometimes this one will not get such silver. You can see some of those look splashy, but on this, 
Those are actually silver, but it's very muted silver. And then the green one, I have no idea what, what we're gonna do with this, to be honest. It also looks nice. Some splash here. I don't know, we'll see how many of them fit in the pot. But I'm going to put them in these pots and in the prop box. So this is the limitation. And then um, I have Kanyu Komariana, she will go in different pots. But before we can do that, we do have to cut them and let them dry a bit before we can pot them. So I will just do that. It's a lot of the green polynera, to be honest with you. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna pick the prettiest ones. Here we can see this is new growth. This is not fully hardened, so I think it would root, but I would keep this as a two note cutting, this top, just to make sure that those leaves make it. Now with Polinera, I would try to get as much of the stem as possible. And, you know, if I feel that there isn't enough stem, I'm just gonna do a larger cutting, like here. I think I'm just going to do a larger cutting. Also, these leaves are somewhat new. So this is going to be a two note cutting here. This has a decent stem, so that's going to be a one node cutting. And then I think this we can leave as is. You can cut it, but let's try to leave some bigger, some smaller. Same with this one. I'm going to do this as a two node top. And then the rest on this, I'm just going to do as one note and you can do one note cuttings at home i know that people are sometimes iffy with when it comes to one note cuttings but you can definitely do one note cuttings at home much easier than when you buy them it's far less risky to do one note cuttings at home because you're going to be potting this pretty instantly and this is going to go into the prop box right away i am going to remove the bottom of these. I typically like to put them in see-through pots when I propagate them, but I think it's going to be fine. I never had any issues rooting Hoya Polymera. They are very easy for me to root. If you propagate them in water, in cocoa peat and perlite. I'm going to attempt cocoa husk with these, so we'll see. And they're gonna go back on the wall. So these, because these are all older growth, I'm just going to do one node. These two new leaves, that's new growth, so I'm going to do that as two node, and the rest can be one node. And Hoya Polinera does make aerial bumps, so it's pretty easy to root. You don't have to worry about that. This plant, these Polineras, they were so coveted at one point. Oh my gosh. Can't believe, like even the regular green one was super coveted. Okay, I'm gonna let those dry. The reason why I don't want to put this in the pot is because it's gonna do, it's gonna look like this. And this is not the growth pattern that works on my wall. What works on my wall currently is something like this. And they eventually do start to fall. But yeah, I, you know, I currently cannot have them do this, right? Just, I shan't be, what? No. Mm -mm. So I am just going to chop this one. All right, so our Hoya Polineras have dried. We have the pots here, and I don't know why I have four, because I have three Hoyas, but that's okay. Counting, right? So I'm going to fill this with cocoa husk. We will be rooting these in cocoa husk. I find that the Hoyas root really well in cocoa husk and I don't think we will be needing anything else here because this is just not a very chunky cocoa husk mist. There are some fibers and actually I have found Polinera to be somewhat resilient. I previously thought they could not be underwatered. However, I will say that the green one was in pawn and it wasn't in self-watering pot and she was fine. I mean, root millibug aside, she was fine. So 
I think we're going to be finding cocoa husk only. Now I think when you have a large plant, there is a less chance that the root mealybugs have climbed all the way up. It's not impossible, but I do believe the chance is lesser. And I think if they do climb up, they probably stay somewhat close to the base, hopefully. <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. Uh, we do have some aerial roots here that don't look good, so I'm just gonna remove those. And I'm going to orient these away from the wall because they're supposed to grow this way. So we're kind of seeing the back of it currently. I'm gonna turn this towards me so I'm kind of seeing a little bit better what I'm doing. And then these are gonna go into a prop box. And hopefully within two weeks they will be rooted. They again root pretty fast in this. So to be quite honest with you, I don't think initially this will look super cute because they are going to be hanging on the wall like this. And you know, it's not super cute. But I think within a couple of months, it will appear cuter. So, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of cuter when you look at it from this side, but yeah. Okay, let's do the silver one. I did a slightly better job with this. Oh, I forgot about cutting. Okay. Well, that explains it. <laughs> there are fewer cuttings. But it does look slightly better, I believe, at this spot. There is another one? What What the heck? What are you doing, Hoya? Okay, are we done? <laughs> so about eight can fit into this pot. This is going to get huge. I already am thinking maybe this wasn't the best idea, but we'll see, because it's gonna get big. Let's just select here which cuttings I wanna use, because I don't think we can use all of these from the green polinera, and then I will decide if I want to make another big plant. Probably not. You know my sentiment here with this plant. It does suck a little bit that the wall is not gonna look as full as I initially hoped for, but you know, it will fill out. Did we break that leaf? Not, no, that's good. Um, yeah, I think this is enough of the cuttings of the green one. I do have a bunch of them left here, but I think I will root these separately. Honestly, think it's an overkill to put so many polyneras <laughs> in one pot and a potential mistake. But, you know, here's hoping it's not a terrible one. Let's do Hoya Kanya Kumariana. I was initially pretty pissed off, I'm gonna be honest, when I saw that yet again I have root mealybugs. I didn't have them for two, two and a half years. And just to see them again, you know, not great news. I wasn't really happy about it. And, you know, I do think it is part of the plant life that you, you know, not constantly, but pretty frequently, you have to deal with pests. And I actually received a comment not so long ago where this person was watching one of my 30 Day of Hoya videos and they did not love it because I was talking, I can't remember what Hoya I was covering in that video. Their comment was, oh, everyone always talks about pests. I liked your video until you started to talk about pests. I have had plants for such a long time and never had any pests. I'm like, really? You never had any pests? Interesting. I don't think that's actually the case. I think it's impossible to have especially this many plants and not have pests. But, you know, you believe whatever you want to believe. I don't think it's possible. And, you know, prove me wrong. <laughs> Invite me to check your plants, inspect them, and see if that's actually true. So I'm gonna try to jam as many of these Kanyakumarianas in here as possible. 
I do love this plant. I actually wanted to restart it and the reason I did is because while it did recover, it had a lot of roots that did die back. Like one side of the root ball was super dry. So I decided to give it a bit of a refresh. It is a plant that I really, really like. So, you know, no biggie. And I would love a full pot. This was on the wall. And luckily she did not have any root milius, but she was in a need for a bit of a refresh. Just holding these so they not fall all over. I hope that just by sheer number of cuttings in the pot, they will somehow hold up one another, you know? <laughs> Those are the hopes. And these are all going to go in the prop box together, hopefully in the same prop box, and then most likely in the tent. See, my plan works out. And then, of course, it's going to be much prettier to see a full plant. I really should be doing this with a lot of my hoys, just filling out the pots to get nice plants. I typically have only one cutting in the pot, and that's not a bad... Oh, no, I'm getting some of them out. And that's not so bad when you have, like, hoya with big leaves. But for these smaller, cuter hoyas, I really should be growing them out a bit and then chopping them to bits just making fuller pots it's not super easy to just stick them in the cocoa husk because cocoa husk you know has some resistance but we're trying our best i think we're going to be left with like these two i put them separate because they're part of the base so maybe they not have like the best beginning you can see there it looks like a fork this one too so I'm actually going to keep those separate. And I think I'm gonna grow this probably in my tent after this, just to see how she will do in higher humidity. She was doing okay. Oh, she's never been in the tent, but I think she should have been a larger plant by now. I mean, obviously I cut it, I cut it, but I've had this for three years. And while she did start from a small cutting and again, cut her several times, th these fell out. Um, I just think she should have been larger. I mean, you can see how many cuttings I got from my plants. So I don't know if that's telling. Now, back to the root mealybugs. bugs. I honestly am not sure what to tell you what treatment is going to work best. And I'm going to actually switch my camera a bit so we can talk. All right, so slightly better. I'm not sure which treatment is going to work best. In the past, I would typically restart my plants every single time, but as we know, that may not be the best course of action here. So that's slightly unfortunate, but it is what it is. I hope that the sous vide plus the ceramic was enough. I heard that regular neem drenches work really well. So perhaps we can try those out in the future. I don't think we have good quality neem oil here. I couldn't find it before. Yeah, I'm gonna keep you updated. I would like this to be an ongoing discussion because I'm not gonna go into the mite territory, even though I did mention them first in like 2020. I'm not gonna go there, but with root millibugs, maybe we can. <laughs> maybe this can be like the root millibug channel and then Adam and Betsy, they can be the spider mite channels. <laughs> I'm just gonna dedicate here some time to root mealybugs. They're pretty frequent in Hoyas, in Hoyas, in cacti, in begonias. And when I say cacti, I mean all succulent echeverias and actual cacti. And then in begonias, they're pretty common. In gesneriads with African violets and similar plants, they're very common. I haven't seen them in any of my aeroids. I did see them in sensiverias when I used to have those. So, you know, never had them on my anturiums, never had them on orchids. It doesn't mean they cannot attack those plants, but I think they do have like a preferred thing here. Like for example, Scale really loves Schifflera, but I haven't seen Scale on my Hoyas. So we have the root millibugs and the spider mites. Air rates have thrips, and while thrips can attack Hoyas, you know, they really devastate the air rates, so. Anyways, I'm going to clean this up and continue with my videos. I have to finish that wall. I think today and tomorrow we can finish it, hopefully. And then I will leave some space 
for these plants that I restarted today and then in a couple of weeks I'm going to add them to the wall as well. Fingers crossed. That is all for today. Let me know about your experience with root mealybugs and what do you do to treat them. And yeah, I will see you very soon. I will keep you updated and you know, if I find more mealybugs, more root mealybugs, we're just gonna smile through it. We're not going to get a flamethrower and burn everything down. We're not going to get a flamethrower, no. That's not something that we do, Miro. We call that intrusive thoughts. Okay, goodbye. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, Amber Kosher, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Aspen Drake, Patsy Bougie Panda, Brad Noble, Catherine Molina, Colleen Coyle Levi, Daniela Danub Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Dili Heredia, Deanne Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Edith W., Erin Keenan, Ellen Isaacson, Vera, Gathering Moss, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppencamp, Hoji Scott, Scott Hoya Heather, Jamie Arsenault, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Yavin Denot, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelly Gallagher, Kelso, Kimberly Polka, Kiwi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Leplan de Steph, Lisa Marie, MPLS, Lori J. Revert, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Marcelino Novosansky, Maria Stein, Marina Yarmolik, Maria West, Maris B, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Moa Edmund, Neely Yang, Niha Basu, Nicole Maroni, Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ Plan the Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Tessa Martin, Stia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Tristan Thomas, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Zenia Green, Youth of the Wallamut, Zurtarama, and Zlok of Nipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Kilon, Constance, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay Ann, Lisa Helling, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Sykes, Zara, Ringlov, and Tang Watanas Riaku. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, one anonymous patron, Alice Borolin, Brenda Pacheco, Christina Greengrass, Colleen Coyle Levi, Couture Helvetica, Amelia Bronson, Joanna Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Jonas Bayer, Hjort Larson, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M., Lori Ann Subramaniam, Luzmin Fernandez, Millie Spicer, Olivia Chen Muller, and Tracy the Eye Miller. <laughs>